Good evening, and welcome to the 2023 State of the City Address. Richmond, Virginia is the home of 230,000 residents who are students, artists, educators, scientists, elected officials, parents, and so much more. Richmond is the vibrant epicenter of culture, commerce, business, and education. The city of Richmond is transforming daily, and there's more progress on the horizon. Virginia may be for lovers, but Richmond is at the heart of it all. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please rise for the invocation led by Council President Michael Jones and remain standing for the presentation of colors by the City of Richmond Police and Fire Department's Joint Honor Guard, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Asher Ramos, Alex Berry, Sam Sheft, Hugh Broadband, fifth graders at Linwood Halton, and the National Anthem led by the VCU Brass Quintet. Good evening. Oh, we can do better than that. Good evening. Good evening. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. There's a Bible verse that says how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. And it is in that spirit of unity that we gather here in this place. It's in that spirit of unity that we all hearken our hearts unto the Lord who has created all things good and called nothing unclean. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. You are the mother of all creation. You have created all things and have done all things well. We thank you for the gift of love and reconciliation that calls us to spaces like these where slaves were once traded and auctioned off. We thank you for spaces like these where the sons of daughters and sons and daughters of slaveholders and the sons and daughters of uh, uh, slaves got gather now to do and create a more perfect union. We thank you for this space in which we come to celebrate even post-pandemic, even post-trials and tribulations. We gather to celebrate all that you have done in this city. We thank you for this capital city, for those that lead, for those that serve, for those that serve and share every single day, putting their lives on the line, giving their gifts, skills, and talents for those who are the least and the left out. We thank you this day, O oh God, that you have assembled us, that we are not here just in tragic situations, in tragic moments. We thank you for the opportunity to hear where we've been, but most importantly, God, where we are going. And God, we are indeed as a commonwealth and indeed as a city going somewhere, doing something to make a mark in this season. So God, we ask that you would cover us this day. We ask that your spirit would fill us we ask you that compassion would be the order of the day. We thank you for our mayor. We thank you for our council. We thank you for our school board. God, we thank you for all of the city leaders that show up every single day, regardless of the charge, regardless of the duty, to dispatch it as honestly and faithfully as we can. So be with us this day. We thank you for bringing forth bread from the earth. We thank you for sharing and raining down your love on us. We ask all these things in the name of your matchless Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's creation said, Amen. Amen. Present four.
pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Let's give our program participants another round of applause. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to the stage City of Richmond's Chief Administrative Officer, Lincoln Saunders, to officially welcome us and introduce Mayor LeVar Stoney, CAO Saunders. Good evening. Good evening. First, I want to say a very special thank you um, to our, our friends and partners at Hunting Andrews Kurth who sponsored tonight's reception. If we could join me in a quick round of applause and appreciation for them tonight. It is my distinct pleasure tonight to welcome you to the 2023 State of the City Address by Mayor LeVar M. Stoney. But before I ask you to join me in welcoming Mayor Stoney to share with us his views on the progress we're making as a city, I would first like to acknowledge and recognize the public servants, the servant leaders who we believe have made much of the progress you'll hear about tonight possible. Starting with our Deputy Chief Administrative Officers, Reggie Gordon for Human Services, and if you'd stand as I call you. Sharon Ebert for Economic and Community Development. Bob Steidel for Operations. And Sabrina Joy Hogg for Finance and Administration. As well as our public safety leaders, Stephen Willoughby for Emergency Communications, Preparedness and Response. 
our fire chief, Melvin Carter. And police chief, Rick Edwards. As well as our department heads, who judiciously steward a public enterprise of more than $2.3 billion annually. If our directors will please stand. Come on now. But as one of our guest speakers at a recent uh, fire department promotional ceremony reminded us, as you climb the ladder of leadership, if you forget those who are holding you at the base of that ladder, you are certain to fall. Each of us in a leadership position here at the city knows that nothing is possible without the 3,000 city employees who devote their talents to this city each and every day. Over the past few months, I've had the opportunity to meet with hundreds of City of Richmond employees at roughly a dozen employee engagement sessions. What has struck me in these conversations is that, to a person, our city employees are committed to high performance. If anything, they're looking to us as their leaders to help them perform even better. Our employees want accountability for themselves, for one another, and from us as their leaders. But if there's one area that I walked away realizing that we as leaders and as community members must do a better job of, it's expressing our heartfelt appreciation and respect for our city employees, the officers and firefighters who come to work each and every day with public service in their heart. So let's not miss the opportunity to do that right now. Would all the City of Richmond employees here with us tonight please stand, and will the rest of us here tonight please join me in applauding their service. Our city is on the move. From internationally renowned artists to top-ranked universities to cultural diversity that is second to none. The road to Richmond is paved with great expectations, change, and the idea that we can be anything we set our minds to be while leading with compassion and fortitude. We have some very special guests with us tonight, both in person and watching virtually. Tonight we celebrate our seniors. And several local senior centers and assisted living facilities have set up viewing opportunities so that those who have made our city what it is today can join us in the celebration of where we are and where we are going. We stand on their shoulders and we are grateful for their contributions to this great city. All right, now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the State of the City Address. Under Mayor Stoney's leadership, we have weathered a global pandemic and come out stronger on the other side. He has dedicated his leadership to changing the perception of our great city from one that is stuck in the past to one that is focused on its future and inclusivity. He believes that everyone has the right to live and prosper in a safe and welcoming community. And when we look around Richmond today, he is truly making that a reality. Mayor Stoney is a man who dreams and works to turn those dreams into tangible goals that our residents can see and feel. Now, if you don't work closely with Mayor Stoney like many of us, you might wonder if there's any bite behind that toothy grin of his. And yes, in general, he is a positive thinker with a happy demeanor, but don't be fooled. I once described the mayor's leadership style as having one arm around your shoulder and one foot up, you know what. <laughs> I know that the progress we've made as an administration is because Mayor Stoney is putting in the work to keep the promises he's made. And he's pushing this team and holding us accountable as an administration for delivering on those commitments. So at this time, let us welcome to the stage our city's biggest cheerleader, my friend and our leader, Mayor LeVar Stoney.
please have a seat, everyone. And let's, uh, let's give a round of applause to our Chief Administrative Officer, Lincoln Saunders. And let's recognize some who participated in the program. Let's recognize the Richmond Police Department, the Fire Department for the presentation of the colors. And how about the VCU Brass Quintet for that national anthem? And the young ones from Linwood Old Elementary School for the Pledge of Allegiance. And let's thank my friend, the President of Richmond City Council, Mike Jones, for the invocation. And since I know what I'm doing, let me recognize the other members of City Council who are here with us today. Stephanie Lynch is with us. Dr. Cynthia Newbill. Councilwoman Ellen Robertson. Councilwoman Vice President Kristen Nye. Reva Trammell's with us tonight, everyone. And Catherine Jordan as well. Let's give them all a round of applause. And if I, I will be remiss if I didn't recognize my fiance, Brandy Washington. So, to the honorable members of the city council. To, oh, oh, I didn't, I did not see Ann Francis Lambert, everyone. See, I got that type of council. When you don't recognize, they're gonna let you know. <laughs> so, to the members of the Richmond City Council, to the members of the school board are with us tonight as well. <laughs> to those members, members of our distinguished community, our leaders, and residents of this great city, good evening. My friends, can you believe this is my first State of the City address in person since January 2020. And damn, it feels good to be back in front of you all tonight. My fellow Richmonders, standing before you tonight, I see a city thriving, a city filled with promise and hope, a city filled with maturity and purpose. During my tenure as your mayor, our great city has seen population growth, economic growth, and cultural growth. We have more tools at our disposal than ever before. We have more programs and resources. We have more community and accountability. We're becoming a more efficient and effective government. Today, our team, city council, city employees, our community partners, is the strongest it's ever been. Business is booming. Our financial house is in order. Our streets are cleaner and our communities safer and healthier. And in our quest to be the best city we can be, Richmond is winning. And our work continues. As you know, Richmond was once the capital of the Confederacy, which in the past meant someone who looked like me could have been arrested or even killed for making eye contact with the wrong person. And when I took office in 2017, our city was still honoring its symbols of hate, oppression, and division. Well, not today. Today, Richmond is free of Confederate monuments. And our past is no longer leading our present. Now we are leading our future, a future that includes all Richmonders, no matter the color of their skin, whom they pray to, or whom they love, and we will protect them all. We will fight relentlessly for stronger gun and safety laws, advocate against any attempt to restrict access to safe and legal abortions, and stand up to hate in all its forms. We will continue to make Richmond a great city, filled with opportunity and justice for all generations to come. A capital of compassion, 
a city where all can thrive. And thriving can mean many things, including economic empowerment. I'm proud to say that the last year was our most successful economic development year yet. Richmond is growing, and we're doing so with equity and inclusion in mind. From the Diamond District in Greater Scotts Edition to the City Center Redevelopment Project in downtown, 2,237 new jobs, 536 new business licenses, 670 commercial business permits, and over a half billion dollars in capital investment. Yeah. Richmond is evolving in real time. We're seeing dilapidated buildings and rundown infrastructure, making way for mixed use, clean, and green first class developments. The CoStar Group broke ground on a $460 million expansion for their research and technology center. They said they chose Richmond because of our local talent and support. This project will bring 2,000 new jobs to our city. This is what it means to be better. This is what it means to be the great city of Richmond. It means intentional economic development matters. Our skyline is filled with cranes and new growth. We've addressed long-standing challenges in our permitting office to streamline the addition of new residential and commercial buildings, and it shows. Now, you will no longer have to wait a month after month for approval. In fact, now, turnaround time for permit applications is down to less than five business days. This allows for new housing units and businesses to open as quickly as possible. And growth isn't just about buildings. It's also about investing in infrastructure improvements. Since I took office, we've invested $70 million into road improvements. Last year, we improved more than 200 miles of streets. We repaved Broad and Main Streets, and we repaved Gilpin court for the first time in 30 years. Now look, I know paving isn't sexy, but it damn sure makes a difference. In 2019, just 35 percent of Richmond roads were considered in good condition. Last year, we took that number up to 64 percent. See, Richmond is better than it was six years ago, and it's getting better each and every day. But we all know progress isn't easy. We know it's not just about potholes and paving. It's about intentional, being intentional and moving in a positive direction. Over the last six years, we've taken a hard look at our community and taken decisive steps to address our past, our present, and our future. Leading up to the Civil War, Shaco Bottom was the second largest domestic slave trading center, second only to New Orleans. Countless enslaved men and women and children were jailed, bought, sold, and killed. On this very ground where we stand today, hundreds of thousands of black lives treated as property, herded, and traded like cattle or worse. Yet, for more than 150 years, the story of Shaco remained largely untold. It was literally paved, built over, and abandoned by generations of Richmonders that preferred not to confront our painful past. Well, it's time that the truth be told, which is why I'm excited to celebrate that we're investing $11 million in grant money from the Mellon Foundation toward telling that forgotten story, the largest philanthropic grant in Richmond's history. Our plan, our plan is to build a 12,000 square foot interpretive center right here on the first floor of this building designed to help visitors unpack the history of one of Richmond's oldest neighborhoods. 
This adds to the already incredible work of champions like Delegate Dolores McQuinn, Councilwoman Cynthia Newbill, and advocate, historic preservation advocate Anna Edwards. This step, along with our investments in the Shaco Heritage Campus, pro proves that Richmond is finding a better way forward. And not just when it comes to our history with race. Tonight, I'd also like to take a moment to celebrate Richmond's Municipal Equality Index score. This is the Human Rights Campaign's national measurement of a locality's commitment to supporting and protecting their LGBTQ residents. Now, when I took office in 2017, our MEI score was 42. 42. But for the past three years, we've scored 100 all three years. A perfect score. Every day, we must work to create a sense of belonging. And I couldn't be more proud of our progress. This is what it means to be the great city of Richmond. This is what it means to be the capital of compassion. I'm proud when Richmond receives public accolades and notoriety for our efforts, but it seems even more, it means even more to me when I hear it directly from our community members. Like when I visited the Senior Holly Ball for the first time since the pandemic, and I was greeted with a lot of big hugs and a lot of big kisses on the cheek. Or when I visited Mary Scott Preschool just last week, and a student named King gave me a card that said, I love you, I wish you well, I like salad with chicken, do you? <laughs> so tonight, King, I want you to know, I like salad with my chicken as well. We all know we have countless families in our community who need help, but just aren't getting it. Over the last six years, we've reduced the poverty rate from 26 to 19 percent. But I'm here to tell you tonight that we must not stop there. That's why I am so proud of, our, of the success of our Guarantee Income Pilot Program. The Richmond Resilience Initiative, which provides $500 a month to folks who need help but don't qualify for federal benefits, has already touched the lives of 64 families. For example, one woman in the program is a single mother with a master's degree who currently is working to become a licensed clinical social worker. She said the program help, helps her provide food and daycare, pay her daughter's medical expenses, and ensure stable housing and transportation. Providing help to Richmonders like her is what this administration is all about. Real people, real problems, and real solutions, finding a better way. And as many of you all may know, my dad was a custodian when he died of heart disease at age 49. He was a former offender, a returning citizen, who had a felony on his record. My dad had countless doors slammed in his face when he was looking for work. But he never quit. He's one of the reasons I've always been such an advocate for second chances. That's why I'm so pleased to announce that thanks to the great success of the Richmond Resilience Initiative, we have allocated $250,000 to the organization Help Me Help You to launch a new guaranteed income pilot program for returning citizens. This pilot program will be the first of its kind in the Commonwealth of Virginia. You know, later in life, my father became the head of maintenance at a high school. He was beloved by the students, by the staff, and by the faculty. And even though my father never graduated from high school, he knew the power of public education. He believed it was the great equalizer. I can remember when my brother and I were young, 
You know how some parents read fairy tales to their kids at night? Well, my dad would tell us a story about kids that went to college. And he told it to us every night when we couldn't sleep. And I guess all those stories, all those tales, instilled in me that one day I would go to college. In fact, I can remember when he did pass away, that some, you know, sometimes they let you place a few mementos in the casket. Well, I put my college diploma in there. My diploma is with my dad because we earned it together. Being the first person in my family to graduate from college was a big deal for us. And my dad was the main reason that happened. That's why tonight I'm thrilled to share that I have directed my office of children and families to lay the groundwork for what we're going to call the Pathways Program. With an initial investment of $1.5 million, this year we will pilot a program that supports RPS graduates to and through community college beginning this fall. We will pair, we will pair a traditional scholarship with a monthly cash allowance, mentorship, and additional supports so that more RPS graduates have the opportunity to achieve post-secondary success. And whether that means it translating to career-specific credentials or credits to be transferred to a four-year institution. And I couldn't do this alone. I'm honored and excited to announce J. Sargent Reynolds Community College and the nonprofit Greater Aspirations Program, better known as GRASS, have linked arms with us to accomplish this goal for our city. Thank you. Additionally, I want to thank the Community Foundation, Altria, CoStar, and Dominion, who have already committed their support for this initiative. And tonight, I'm challenging others in our generous business community to stand with us and invest in the futures of our kids. See, I'm the product of public education. School was my sanctuary. It's where I realized my love for public service. Our Pathways program is another step towards ensuring that our city's greatest asset, our children, have the support and opportunity to establish a long-lasting career, to have a choice in their pathway. The Pathways program will also become part of our larger vision that I'm calling the Richmond Commitment. We are committed to universal access to preschool. We are committed to quality after-school programming, and we are committed to higher education to set our kids up to succeed in this life. My fellow Richmonders, I remain committed to supporting our kids throughout their journey from babies to adulthood. That's why that was my commitment to you when I ran for this office in 2016, and that is exactly what we have delivered and what we will continue to deliver. Since 2017, my administration has increased funding for Richmond Public Schools by 33%. Let me say that again. We have increased funding for RPS by 33%. We have built three new schools in black and brown neighborhoods. Yeah. We, made sure that, we made sure that every elementary and middle schooler has access to after-school programming. We helped, yeah. 
We did it. We helped secure $180,000 to feed our babies during the nationwide baby formula crisis. We are investing $78 million of our American Rescue Plan Act funds to create four world-class community centers. And we added over 250 child care and preschool slots using ARPA funding. And tonight, and tonight, I'm pleased to announce that we are going to add more using a $250,000 allocation from our children's fund we are partnering with the YWCA to help open a new sprout school in the Oregon Hill neighborhood now some of you all may not know what sprout schools are sprout schools provide full day high quality early childhood education for children age two months to five years, regardless of income status. This new school will be able to serve an additional 60 kids, and I cannot wait to celebrate its opening this summer with the YWCA. Thank you, YWCA. See, I'm proud of the work we have done to support our children and families. We also know that we need to do more than expand child care access and build new schools. We need to build affordable, safe, and quality housing, too. Now, y'all know I don't agree with Governor Yunkin on many things. But I do wholeheartedly agree with him that housing density is a good thing. We need more homes, period. And as you are likely aware, we set a goal to create 1,000 new affordable rental units each year. That's 10,000 by 2030, and we're making good on that commitment. Last year, we released $10 million in ARPA funding, resulting in over 1,000 new affordable housing units. And just last week, we released another $8 million for affordable housing development and preservation, for which applications are due on February 14th, but we aren't stopping there. In fiscal year 2023, we increased the funding for the Richmond Eviction Diversion Program by 50%. And since its inception in late 2019, it has already prevented 1,500 households from being displaced. We've also recently allocated over $4 million to assist those experiencing homelessness and to help folks to get into stable housing. See, as a capital of compassion, I'm proud that our city invests more money and resources for the unhoused than any other locality in Central Virginia. Now, last November, we announced $18 million towards uh, tax rebates for qualifying Richmond residents, also known as our Five Back Initiative. And we're currently advocating for a bill in the General Assembly that will protect long-term residents from rising property assessments. This is something our administration takes very seriously and is part of every decision we make. It's also something I care about personally. Growing up, we lived paycheck to paycheck. The opportunity to own a home and create generational wealth was never really in the cards for us. Unfortunately, many Richmonders are in that very same boat. This administration is committed to ensuring that all Richmonders are afforded the opportunity to create generational wealth through owning their first home. However, as I recently shared at the U.S. Conference of Mayors, cities are facing a new challenge. Private, out-of-town investors are buying huge swaths of historically owner-occupied single-family homes and either flipping those properties into rental units or selling them at a huge markup. And look, it's happening all across our city, from the Fan to Churchill to Highland Park 
and Blackwell. And of course, our low-income neighborhoods are the hardest hit. We're seeing one in five homes sold to outside investors, investors that have access to quick cash that the majority of our residents just do not. These transactions are both skewing the market and limiting supply for new homeowners, which is why I have tasked my administration, working with the Richmond Redevelopment Housing Authority and other community partners with the goal of creating 2,000 new home ownership opportunities by, for low-income Richmonders by 2030. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to invest an initial $2 million for this effort, and in the coming months, we will finalize our plan of action, which will not, not only focus on building, preserving, and protecting homes, but on creating sustainable home ownership opportunities for families. We're going to do that through down payment assistance programs and financial empowerment education. The cornerstone of a thriving community is also a safe community with neighborhoods and safe streets. In Richmond, that means we have to be tough on crime and tough on the root causes of crime. We have to support our first responders and hold them to the highest standard. And in order to ensure that policing in our communities is done safely, fairly, and with accountability, we also created Richmond's first civilian review board and we remain committed to working alongside council until it's operational. We've allocated $22 million in pay increases for our police officers and firefighters, the most significant pay increase ever for our first responders. And between the police department, the fire department, and the Department of Emergency Communications, we invested over $177 million to public safety in fiscal year 2023, the largest investment in Richmond's history. But, but our police department, like departments all across this country, is still short on officers, meaning our police department must work strategically to keep us safe which is why I'm thrilled to announce we've received a $750,000 grant from the Commonwealth of Virginia to launch Richmond's first real-time crime center. And I'd like to thank Secretary of Public Safety Mosier and Governor Yunkin for their assistance with this effort. Now, I told you all, when it comes to public safety, we're going to throw the entire kitchen sink at it. And this is what the kitchen sink looks like. Now think of this as an air traffic control for officers in the field. Using cameras and other modern technology, real-time crime centers have the ability to maximize the efficiency and speed of investigations. From Las Vegas to Miami, real-time crime centers are a force multiplier helping lock up violent offenders and locate illegal guns. This isn't officers relying on hunches. These are all things that have been proven to work. Birmingham, Alabama was able to solve 150 cases, including homicides, in the first six months because of the innovations made by an RTCC. I'm proud that the efforts of our officers and community working together resulted in a 34% decrease in our homicides last year. And that was one of the largest reductions in the nation. But 59 homicides are still 59 too many. So we're going to do more. Last year, our summer gun violence initiative use data to divide our city into 29,000 micro areas. RPD was able to identify specific locations down to the street level with the highest rates of violence. And by allocating additional resources to these specific sites, we saw a 54% reduction in murders in those areas compared to the same period of time the previous year. <laughs> and 
and we're continuing to expand this initiative. Simple practices like increasing RPD's visual presence in specific areas are making huge impacts. And over the past year, Operation Red Ball made 235 felony arrests and 167 misdemeanor arrests. And RPD removed over 1,000 illegal guns from our streets. <laughs> Folks, I'm, I'm going to be frank with you all tonight. We have a serious problem in this country. We have too many damn guns. And I agree with the sentiment of Acting Police Chief Rick Edwards, and that is if there was just one thing that our community could do to help make our streets safer, is to always lock up your gun. <laughs> 714 guns were stolen from cars in Richmond this past year alone. 714. So, if you own a gun, I'm begging you to make sure it's not just left in your car. Store it safely so it won't be stolen and end up in the hands of a criminal. And I want to be explicitly clear. Working with our federal partners, we will pursue the maximum federal charges for illegal guns and illegal modifications like Glock switches and drum magazines that turn already dangerous handguns into weapons of war. If you possess these weapons, you will be held accountable. But we aren't stopping there. We're also addressing the root causes of crime. Take our gun violence prevention intervention framework. At its core, it is more than data-driven practices to reduce gun violence. It's lifting up our communities and building stronger partnerships. It's creating the first ever positive youth development fund with Next Up RVA, $1.5 million in funding for community-based after-school programming. We're providing alternative responses to mental and behavioral health calls for services, also known as the Marcus Alert. And we're also addressing blight, creating new green spaces and parks and installing new street lights. This is what it means to be the great city of Richmond. Intentional, results-oriented, and better than before. But public safety isn't just about violent crimes. I'm saddened to say we had a record high of 28 vehicular fatal fatalities last year, which is 28 too many. And to help address this issue, RPD has identified areas in each of the city's four precincts where crashes are more likely to occur. And last month began a 90-day campaign to reduce aggressive, impaired, and inattentive driving. RPD is also partnering with the Virginia State Police to create sobriety checkpoints throughout the city. We remain committed to improving pedestrian and traffic safety through engineering, through education and enforcement as we continue to implement Vision Zero. Now, I mentioned earlier that we have the strongest team we've ever had. I'm blessed that I get to come to work and serve with amazing city employees, 3,000 of them each and every day public servants who come to work each day committed to making Richmond's future brighter. And they all deserve our appreciation. Because for generations, the city of Richmond government has been the pathway to the middle class. And we remain committed to being a diverse and fairly compensated employer. Now everyone who works for city government makes at least $17 an hour a change I made in our fiscal year 2023 budget, and we'll keep investing in our workforce. <laughs> Additionally, 
we are the first locality in Central Virginia to establish a pathway to collective bargaining. And I'm proud that we are leading the way. This administration, along with our can-do city council, has made incredible, they've made incredible efforts to fight for and protect our city employees and their families. And I would be remiss if I didn't say to all of y'all, we are hiring. <laughs> My fellow Richmonders, despite a global pandemic paired with social and economic upheaval, we are experiencing much more than a comeback. As you heard tonight, our city is roaring back. Gone are the days of ineffective and inefficient governance. Gone are the days of unfulfilled potential. Gone are the days of honoring division. Today, we work together. Today, we thrive together. Today, we rise together. Our great city has come a long way these past six years. The state of our city is better than it's ever been before. And I say, the best is yet to come. Thank you all for joining me tonight. God bless you, and God bless the great city of Richmond.